everybody. Thank you so much for joining me and the rest of these beautiful people that we have on the screen today. Happy Friday. We have the amazing Cade from Mid Boss. We also have Deer in the house and Les Bayana. And of course, yours truly, Ashley. I work at Totify as a community manager and I get to do amazing things with creators and highlighting them and their content. And I am so honored I get to do this, especially with the people here today. So thank you so much for joining me and everyone in chat. Please take the time to follow these creators. I have the Control Plus extension on our stream. So make sure you follow them all to keep up with their content and everything. So again, I'm Ashley. I work at Tiltify as a community manager and we're gonna throw introductions around. So let's start with the one and only Cade. Tell us a little bit about yourself and your role at Midboss. Uh, hi, my name is Cade Peterson. Um, I run a little queer indie game studio called Midboss. Um, I do the boring business bear kind of stuff behind the scenes, marketing and keep the everything running. Um, and that's pretty much it. Thank you so much. We're so happy to have you. And we're going to throw you. it to Deer, my love. Can you introduce yourself and talk a little bit about mm -hmm. your content and what you've been doing on Twitch all these years? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> my name is Deer. Let's play with you fear. I like to play scary games here on Twitch. Um, I've been doing my drag and playing scary games for the past five years. And I just love it so much. I'm the founder of Team Stream Queens, an all-drag troupe of content creators on Twitch, um, including Lesbiana, our gorgeous drag king here. <laughs> um, I just love what I do so much. I love to get in drag. I mean, y'all said this was a video interview, and I'm like, I'm going to be in drag <laughs> at what, uh, <laughs> before noon, which is, <laughs> it's not my preference, but when you, you all did make it. the call, I do it. Because I just you. love drag. Any any excuse to get in drag is exciting. Um, and I'm so excited to be here. Thank you so much. And I love to raise for charity. And Tiltify makes it happen. Tiltify is the best. It makes it easy. It makes it quick. And it's very user-friendly. So anytime I can collaborate with Tiltify just by using the services there, um, it's always a pleasure. Thank you. We appreciate it. And we're so grateful that you use our platform because... We just love having you a part of our community. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're also going to throw that question to Lesbiana. Let's learn a little bit about you, my dear. Uh, well, yes. My name is Lesbiana. I am a, as you can see, a drag king uh, streamer on Twitch. Um, like Deer said, I am part of Team Stream Queens, um, as well as uh, Team Technicolor, which was uh, been founded by London Bradshaw who is a black uh, digital content creator. Um, as far as my Twitch channel, I'd like to play a lot of Pokemon. Um, what else? A lot of different variety games, Dead by Daylight. I do a lot of collabs. I've played with Deer and some of the other members of the team. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, a lot of survival games. So I've played like Ooh. The Forest, uh, Raft, um, I'm currently restarting uh, Seven Days to Die <laughs> by myself, which is a little terrifying, but um, I'm also trying to um, do, try to get like some of the members of the team to come and join me so that we could all be on one, um, which would be fun. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much for those introductions. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We're going to start right off and learning more about Cade and their role at Midboss. And can you give us some history about Midboss? Sure. Uh, Midboss was founded about eight or nine years ago, and it was a company created as a spinoff of a group called GamerX, which was um, made to be the first sort of like LBGTQIA+. Uh, game convention to be, you know, more inclusive and make sure that everything was just much more, you know, friendly towards some of the people like us um, of the Rainbow family, I, I suppose you could say. And Midboss was created as the a game creation company. And, and then three years ago, we split off and we run separately, but we obviously support each other separately. But um, so that's Midboss. That's the history of it. I joined three years ago and took it over and um, I have been just driving it 
towards new and cool goals and successes. <clears throat> um, and we, the company is famous mostly for the first game that we put out called 2064 Read Only Memories. Uh, we are currently developing the sequel called Read Only Memories Neurodiver, which should come out next year. Um, in the last year and a half, we've also had worked with IDW Comic Book Publishing to create a Read Only Memories comic book series. And the trade paperback actually comes out September 7th. It'll hit store shelves. So if you're interested, make sure you call your local comic book shop, ask them to order it. Or I think you can pre-order it on Amazon. Um, what else? And then we have a couple other big projects in the works also related to the franchise that I cannot talk about yet. But they're mm -hmm. even mm -hmm. bigger and better, which is really exciting. So, secrets. We always have secrets in the game industry. But the good thing <laughs> is we get to unveil them at some point, which is always fun. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Does that answer your question? Did I miss anything? No. Unless you have more for me. I, I love oh, more. Uh, oh, I, have, I always have lots to talk about. So yeah. one of the reasons why we got all connected with Deer and Les is this is our third year that we're doing something we call the Season of Pride. It's a full month marathon of charity fundraising um, where we work with um, queer streamers of all kinds, exclusively playing queer inclusive games. Um, and each one raises money for a queer charity at the same time and so this is our third year every year gets a little different and better um we're on day number what is this the 20 23rd <laughs> out of 31 days um, mm -hmm. and it's 15 hours a day which is quite a it's literally quite a marathon but it's All just day amazing yeah it's pretty much 9 a.m to midnight pacific time mm -hmm. every day mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but but it it's just it's a it's a work of love, I guess you could say, and it just continues to just make wonderful things happen. Um, we, you know, because Midboss is kind of well known to be like, you know, the, like one of the leading queer game studios. We want to make sure that we use our little bit of a platform as such to help raise visibility for other game developers making positive, inclusive games, um, because we feel like there's just We've, there's been strides in the industry to make more inclus inclusion that's um, that's good and but we, we want to see more and so this is a, a good chunk of this is just to encourage more and to spotlight games that are out there that may not be as well known but are still really excellent and um, it generally does a really wonderful job and if we can raise money for charity in the process like all the better yeah um, absolutely so that's like our big thing yeah um, that's the majority, yeah. <laughs> the majority of what we do. And Season of Pride has been going so well. And right now, the event is for Trevor Project and Trans Lifeline, correct? So this year, well, we started, we have three charities that year, this year. Okay. Uh, you're right. You have Trevor Project, Trans Lifeline, and GamerX. And GamerX. Uh, GamerX is a, is, um, is a company that was sister companies with us, but they focus on working to, you know, work with the big game companies to help them do better in positive inclusion when mm -hmm. making games. Um, they also consult with um, studios, like third party studios to make sure that they have sensitivity reading, make sure that authentic um, representation for different demographics is done right. And then hopefully when this pandemic is fully over, <laughs> I hope that they'll bring back the game conventions, the queer yes. game conventions, because that is always like super fun. But that's obviously something they couldn't quite do for the last year and a half. Yeah. Um, so, but we've also, at the request of some of our streamers internationally, because we are a global event, um, we have added two more queer charities. One is in Australia called Minus 18. It is a nonprofit down there in Australia that focuses on helping anyone under the age of 18 uh, who is struggling with, you know, coming out or any of the sometimes issues that they face. And then another one that we added is called Mermaids. It's out of the UK. Mm -hmm. Similar thing where it helps families and children who are, or minors under the age of 18 who are realizing that they have either are trans or have a child that's trans and like how to navigate and learn how to, you know, how to position their child for you know a happy and successful life so we've added those two in the last 10 days or so so that's incredible this year. Okay. yeah Aww. we have five this year 
Yay, that's so exciting. I just learned about mermaids a couple months ago. I said, wow, this is incredible. We need more of this. So that is really exciting. And again, it's in the UK. So go mermaids. I love the name and everything. Mm, it's perfect. Right? <laughs> yeah, it's really cute. And like we, whenever the streamers have asked us to add or consider those two, we always do some due diligence scanning and you know review and of course they came out with flying colors as quite ideal so we gladly added them and luckily through tiltify we're able to support them really easily to get donations to come right in through the tiltify system and help support them yes <laughs> and it's easy <laughs> absolutely that is it so really cool is. Yeah. Thank you so much, Cade, for all of that beautiful information. And we got to learn a little bit about Season of Pride and, you know, the main initiative of Mid Boss. So thank you so much for that. And I know there's a way that we can still support Mid Boss and everything through the Steam Summer Sale. Yeah. Yeah. So last month we did a Steam. Steam is, has been very good about supporting us and putting together basically um, an LBGTQ focused game sale every June, which is traditionally, you know, Pride Month. Um, and we just finished it up last month and it helped us, you know, showcase a bunch of games that are mostly overlooked that are really excellent. Um, and the good thing about that is it helps some studios that are really small keep their doors open as well as like, you know, help, help gamers out there discover games that they really find that resonates with them and, um, you know, that may not be something that they get to experience in most games out there. Aww. But yeah, we got to do it again this year. Steam has been really nice and supportive about letting us do that. And it's a very big deal because when you get such a massive, you know, game platform to support you in such a way, it's re it's really meaningful and it really, it, it really changes everything. So yeah. hopefully we will get to do this again and again. Yeah. And is That's it only really cool. for the summer? that you do it every year or throughout the year? Uh, we do it, well, so we, they let us kind of organize the the, the Pride sale every June. Um, last year, we held the season of Pride in June to align with the sale. This year, mm -hmm. we wanted to do it something a little different and we pushed the, the marathon charity thing to July because we realized that, you know, every June 1st, a lot of companies put a rainbow on their logo and then call it a day and then at june 30th they you know take away the colors mm -hmm. and then it's mm -hmm. like okay they check that marks that box for the um for the year and the reason we shifted it well there were several reasons um some of them were just like logistics you know for example with all the pandemic and all the traditional game conventions having shifted to virtual june just got completely full of like too much yeah other stuff happening like there was a pax one there was an e3 yeah. there was the game um, the big Jeff Keeley thing, like all of them were just boom within like a 10, 10 day period in June. And I thought like, let's consider moving it to July. And the more I thought about it, the more it made sense because mm -hmm. pride really is all year round, not just to June. Correct. Yeah. And, and that's, and we also rebranded the event. It used to be called summer of pride um, because it was always in June, but the Southern hemisphere is deep in winter in this month. And since this is a global event and why should June be just in why should Pride only be in June? So we were like, mm -hmm. let's push it out a month and really make people realize that Pride really is all year round. And the charities need money more than just one month a year. They really exactly. need it all the time. So it just made a lot of sense. And so we shifted it and it's been great. So it doesn't align with the June, you know, um, queer game sale, but we still, it helps us almost like marathon them back to back. Mm -hmm. So it actually extends it. So. Yeah, it's a new change, but everybody seems to get it. They get the whole thing. Yep. That, like, you know, companies, you know, can support their LBGTQIA, you know, plus organizations all year round, not just June. So we're making a little statement in a <laughs> sort of subtle way, but people just like get it without even having to um, like spell it out for them. Perfect. I, I love Absolutely. this because... I love it because it's a continuation of yeah. Pride. Like yeah. I was mm -hmm. very... I was actually thankful because I was very booked and very busy <laughs> in June and I still wanted to be a part of mid boss's event. And so when I learned that it was in July, that made it better for my schedule. And it really does solidify that like pride is all the time and mm -hmm. the, right. the celebration right. doesn't have to end on June 30th. It can be in through July, through August, through 
like every single month. Every month. Mm -hmm. Yep. And that's yeah. why I love my job because I'm always going to uplift queer creators within the Totify community all year, every day, every week, every chance I get, not just June. So I'm definitely trying to bring more awareness to that, that, hey, outside of June, you know, you can still uplift these creators. They still have mm -hmm. a life outside right. of June. They still have yeah. bills to play, you know. They right. still have stuff to do. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I'm... See, we're in July, so we're we're on the we're on the right path, and it's going to keep getting better and better. So I appreciate you all taking the time today to chat with the Tiltify community. So thank you, thank you, and Absolutely. you know we're going to throw it to our creators now. Let's start with Les. Okay, mm -hmm. I want you to talk a little bit about what Pride means to you, and how has your experience been fundraising for you know LGBTQIA plus efforts. Uh, let's see. Pride to me is is a lot of things. Um, uh, before the pandemic and all of that, um, I did a lot of things outside of that. Um, I worked as like a security person at a music venue, and so we had a lot of events that circled around LGBTQIA plus um, to kind of uplift them and um, to be all encompassing and inclusive of like all different types, including body types, gender identities, all of that. Um, and then when I started streaming, I wanted to bring what I was doing outside to my Twitch channel, which includes doing drag. Um, and I wanted to make my channel a place where people can come, be safe, be open. Um, and that has led me to, you know, having a little community where people are safe and all of that, as well as help, help me to kind of also moderate for a lot of uh, queer streamers. Um, I can't even think of how many I've modeled, but it's, it's, it's quite a lot. It and is quite the a lot. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And um, I'm, I'm just happy that I'm able to use my skills um, of like multitasking, um, paying attention to detail. Like, I'm just glad that I could use that to help my other siblings uh, be safe in their communities and that's just ultimately yeah just to Aww. make sure that we're all safe and um, open to talk about anything yeah and was there a specific person that inspired you to start creating on twitch Ooh. or anything that inspired you um before the pandemic, I was thinking of starting on Twitch. Okay. Um, but I had like put it off because like uh, I'm not sure how I'm gonna do it with my schedule because it was you know, pre-pandemic. Um, but I was watching Deer, and like just continuously like watching Deer. Um, I was also watching Austin XO, who was also on the team. Um, and that's what made me like, kind of see like, oh, they're not just, they're not just playing games in front of a camera. They're doing drag and video games, which are like two of the most things that I love. <laughs> and so then when the pandemic hit, that really like kickstarted me like, Les, like you have to get this done like <laughs> not get it done make but it like happen. yeah like you have to get, make this happen and um and <clears throat> once I started like getting more and more into Twitch I I noticed that there wasn't really many drag kings and so that as well ultimately like made me think like if I do this like I can bring light to drag kings. And now there's like 
a bunch of drag kings everywhere. Yes. And so I think that we should, uh, you know, support all drag, support drag kings, drag artists in general. Yeah. Wow. And oh, that's so inspiring. Dear, yes. you have inspired so many people <laughs> with your platform. And I hope you know I'm that. Just here being gay. <laughs> Same. <laughs> And I love that for all of you. I love that. And I'm so happy I get to support that in every way I can. I, I try to do everything I can to uplift y'all on all platforms. So thank you. Thank you so much for sharing your story with us, Les. That is so sweet. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so excited for your future because it's just going to go up from here. And you are such an amazing representation for Dry Kings. So thank you. Thank you. You're inspiring so many out there. And hey, there might be someone that looks at you like, hey, I can do it too. We need more representation. So you should be very proud of that. Yeah. I said, yeah. come on in. Come, come on, on in. in. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Our fabulous queen, dear, we're going to throw that same question to you. And just to reiterate, oh, give okay. us, you know, why does what does pride mean to you you know and tell us a little bit about your experience fundraising for lgbt efforts well um pride to me is about being yourself just living by example and showcasing who you are and what you are for the world in a in a, an unapologetic kind of way especially when it's just you're just doing your thing you're not harming anybody you're just Live, you're just existing, really. And um, Pride is all about just, you know, being being an example for another person that might be struggling because they've been told what you are and what you do is wrong. But here I am doing my thing, just having fun and living my life. I think that we can all lend a bit of representation to our backgrounds and to um, our experiences in literally just the most sim simplest way, just stating it, you know, yeah. and that, that, that's, that's a vague, that's vague, but um, I think that representation and visibility is really important. Just like what you said, you, you want to support queer people all year round. I think that that extends to every issue anywhere, anything. Like Black History Month isn't just February. Women's mm -hmm. History Month, and celebration isn't just March. Like it's it's every single day because to the people that those things affect, it's not just one day or one month of the year. It's every single moment that they are living and breathing. And um, pride to me is just that. It's just saying, here I am, here's what I do. I love what I do. And you can either get used to it or you can you know be inspired by it and live yourself live your life truthfully as well, you know? <laughs> yes, exactly. I love that. Like these things are a month for a reason, you know, mm -hmm. got to think about that. It's to bring the awareness <laughs> yes. right. so that it's perpetual at all moments of the day for those people. Exactly. Right. Exactly. And also um, we're, <laughs> we're not, we're not just gay for a yeah. month. <laughs> like, it's not fleeting for us. <laughs> <laughs> and, it's every day <laughs> yeah exactly and when it comes to tiltify i'm so grateful for tiltify i mentioned it before tiltify makes it so easy and so user-friendly to be able to donate and support charities all the time um i have raised i don't know how much but I've raised with my community. I've had um, Trevor Project um, initiatives. Um, I think with Midboss three years ago, I think I was part of the first uh, time. But Trevor I think Project, you were, yeah, <clears throat> yeah. I and it was it was so nice. I think that was one of the first like bigger charity pushes that I've done before. Yeah. But um, Tiltify like. Midboss and Tiltify makes it really easy. Like, here's your charity. Here's how to do it. Just mm -hmm. amplify it. Bring your voice to it. Um, showcase it on socials. And, you know, if anybody wants to support them or is able to support them, it's just boom, PayPal. Yeah. But um, I've raised with Trevor Project, Trans Lifeline, Black Lives Matter, The Bail Project, um, GamerX, um, um, 
No Kid Hungry, World Wildlife Foundation, um, just really countless, countless charities because especially during Pride, but also any time of the year, um, it's nice to collaborate with these different charities and these different pushes just to make sure that people know that these, these things need help and the problems that they address, they're ongoing. So every donation matters. Yes, ongoing. Outside of June, again, mm -hmm. outside of June, outside of February, <laughs> mm -hmm. it is also happening. You know, we saw a lot of success with the bail project last year. Like, hey, yes, the protests were happening, but they are still happening too. <laughs> <laughs> so mm -hmm. continue to support and bring awareness to these causes because it doesn't stop. You know, we have so much more work to do in so many different spaces and industries. So yeah. supporting these organizations, it definitely helps. So and of course, supporting can be in so many different forms. OK, it could be financial support. It could be just word of mouth, you know, socials, all of that. It helps. It brings more awareness. And that's really what they aim for, you know. And the fact that people take the time out of their day to do that, they thank you so much. Any form of support, they're so grateful for. Okay. And especially for queer creators, you know, retweet their content, like yep. their content, lurk in their streams if you can't be active. Go visit their streams. Say hi. Check in with them. Make sure they're doing okay because mental health is also another discussion, you know, for later. But we're yeah. still going yeah. to bring it up because mental health is important. And, oh, yeah, like I said, that's a whole different discussion. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> but check in on your friends and make sure they're okay. All right. Absolutely. So, and yeah, I don't know if we touched on it, Les. Um, you want to talk a little bit about your fundraising efforts for queer organizations and the season of Pride event, maybe? Um, yeah. So this is the first time that um, I'm doing season of Pride. Um, and I, my slots have been mostly during very late hours um, <laughs> because I'm on the East Coast um, and mostly um, a lot of things are done West Coast time. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it, but it has been very good. Um, we were, we are raising funds for Trans Lifeline, um, which is a very important charity um, because it focuses on people who are identify as trans um, and it brings awareness to those things, especially um, in society. Um, there have been a lot of things happening within the trans community, um, especially for black trans uh, people. Um, and so I always try to bring awareness to that and to help those um, that are close to me who are trans and try to uplift them and help them um, support them in any way that I can. Um, I think on my channel, we're like halfway to our goal. Um, so yeah, but we are still continuing to do it till the end of the month um, as much as I can. Yeah. That's awesome. And for the both of you, how has the experience been, you know, being with Mid Boss and fundraising with Season of Pride? Have you built relationships with other creators? Um, you know, how has your community been supporting your initiatives? Can y'all go into that a little bit more? We could start with Deer. Sure. I think that Summer of Pride and Season of Pride are so cool because you can look at the schedule and discover all these different people. Mm -hmm. You can see all these amazing, and you can, they already have the like seal of approval vouched for, um, like these people are queer, they mm -hmm. are, um, part of the community because sometimes mm -hmm. when you're looking through tags on Twitch or looking at socials like it can be sometimes difficult to um, discern if someone is an ally or not and mm -hmm. obviously I love allies I think that the allies are what help issues to be amplified um, not only by the people that are affected by them but people that aren't like it's easy yeah. um, for me to talk about my issues but when I can advocate for even more issues than my own or um, you know when we're talking about bigger, broader themes, um, allies are really important. But at the same time, you still wanna find your people within the community too. So the um, Season of Pride really helps to introduce you to a lot of different creators if you aren't yeah. 
already knowing all of them. Um, it's also really cool because you can connect with these games too, because so many of these yeah. games are um, either just involving simply a queer character prominently or like the whole entire storyline is queer. So it's, mm -hmm. it's awesome because we go through so many games and movies and TV shows that have nothing to do with us and we're just enjoying them for what they are, you know? Oh, like that's a funny movie. That's a, a right. fun game. But um, it's even more special when you can relate to it on a personal level. And these games are really, really personal to yes. us and our struggles. Um, yeah. Also, there was one more thing I wanted to say. Oh, um, I loved, I, I, I forget why I wanted to bring this up. This has nothing to do with anything besides Tiltify. But I love Tiltify also because it makes it very special when someone donates because you get, um, you can implement the pop-ups and you can make sound mm -hmm. effects and you can do chat messages and it makes the community feel very involved in the donations not just when they themselves donate but like we can all celebrate when the marker keeps moving up and up and up more and um you can just like call it out as it's donated. Like in my chat, when we get donations, everybody's like, don't know hype, don't know hype, don't know hype. And then they wait for me to audibly like announce it to everybody. <laughs> and it's always just something to look forward to and it makes it really fun. And that's what makes it special for fundraising on Twitch because it's live and because we can mm -hmm. interact. It's um, cause when you're at like a, you know, you can go to a, a concert and it's for charity. And yes, the announcer is saying like, oh, um, we got this amount of donations or we're almost to our goal, but it's different when I can be like, Miss Ash Rocks, thank you so much for that donation. You had, you made us hit our goal of 500. You know, it makes it more community based and special. Oh. Thank you. We love hearing that. <laughs> we love hearing that. And you know, that's the whole reason why I fundraise because it's so fun with Tiltify. Mm -hmm. totally not biased um but it really that's just how it is you know we're all here because tiltify is kind of awesome and it makes our lives easy and it helps us do good on a grand scale so yeah. we're you know we're, we're here for it you know yeah mm -hmm. and you know we're going to talk more about tiltify and its features later um so leslie anna we're going to throw that same question to you um, talking a little bit about how the season of Pride event has been for you and how has it been for your community and have you been connecting with other queer creators through it? Um, it has been so fun um, participating in the season of Pride um, as well as like connecting with uh, all kinds of different uh, content creators um, mm -hmm. that eventually I would have found, but, <laughs> but um, <laughs> just because, uh, just because the LGBTQIA plus community is, is so big and, and we all have our own like interconnectedness with each other. And so um, it's just fun to connect with others. Um, and as far as um, the community, our community, um, they have been super supportive and, um, the games that I have played um, for Season of Pride have been uh, <laughs> have been interesting, but um, it it has been eye opening in a way, and it has like got me thinking about uh, issues pertaining to LGBTQ individuals. Um, as well as myself, it has like had me like thinking um, about my own identity and like what what that means for me and how I want to portray that to others. And so yeah, so it's been it's been fun. And that's <laughs> that's awesome that those games kind of trigger that conversation. Um, Cade, how does that feel to you? You know, with your role at MedBoss, like, is it fulfilling for your role in your job? Yes, but I will add to this. So what both of them said was, <clears throat> um, after we did the first year, one of the unexpected 
benefits or b things that happened that I, I didn't even think about it, but it didn't even occur to me. But we always do like a little feedback chats with like several of the streamers at the end of the year to like learn how we could improve and what went wrong and how we, you know, just smooth it out and make the next year better. And the most popular thing I hear every single time is that, especially the newbies that are new that year, they're always <laughs> like, wow, I was able to find a whole bunch of new friends and like connect with a whole bunch of these other streamers that I probably would have never found, like Wes said, you know, may or may not have. And what I've seen over the years, because now we're in year three, is that mm -hmm. several of those groups that met in like year one or year two, like there's, I still see them popping up and supporting each other in some of their streams this year. And so there's been like lasting relationships and friendships that have built up. And that was like a really sweet, unexpected, uh, I don't like to the word dividend, but I think in business terms, <laughs> but like <laughs> really an unexpected bonus that happened yeah. and it seems to keep happening. And um, as someone who kind of, I try to watch almost every stream every single day. So I get <laughs> a lot of more visibility than most probably do. And I, I see the same names popping up in different streams all the time. And it's really kind of cool to see that. And then when I hear it in the feedback, it's like, yes, it's very heartwarming because this is, this is about, you know, spotlighting queer games and it's about raising money for queer charities. And it's about, you know, spotlighting queer uh, content makers and streamers as well. But the community that we accidentally built has been <laughs> just one of these amazing things um, that, and I should have, thought about this because I'm a former community manager <laughs> but maybe I just accidentally do things that tend to like spawn community just from years of experience but like it's just very heartwarming and it's very satisfying and it makes all the hundreds and hundreds of hours of work um, that I do behind the scenes completely worth it and I would <laughs> you know keep doing this every year so yeah it's it's it makes it all worth it Aww. there's just so many good things about it but that's like one of my favorite ones <laughs> Aww. Thank you yeah. to our creators that go above and beyond with their communities to do good. We really appreciate it. And thank you to you too, definitely, for chatting with us and sharing all your wonderful <laughs> experiences and all the fun memories that you're getting from this event. And, you know, let's let's dive in a little bit about Tiltify and some features. Um, <clears throat> so we're going to start with Deer. We'll start with Deer. Um, using the Tiltify platform, you say it's great and you're having a great experience. But of course, we can always do better and we always take feedback, you know, because we're always, always working to make the platform better. So, are there any features that you think you would like to have on Tiltify to make your experience even better? Um, I would say the, the only thing I could think of, because I, I would say across the board, when I've used Tiltify for my charity pushes, it's pretty user-friendly. Like, I can't really think of, like, mm -hmm. an exact problem anywhere. The only thing, maybe, is um, I don't know how um, closely you work with charities as they're, like, signing up to be able to use Tiltify. But every once in a while, I'll, I'll come across one where it doesn't have PayPal as an option. You have to use a credit card. And so mm -hmm. I would have, I would make it like, make sure that there's a PayPal account on there to accept <laughs> donations. Cause yeah. some people have PayPal cause they, they shop with it or they go on eBay with it or whatever <laughs> they do. <laughs> but um, some people don't have credit cards or don't have access to credit cards for online purchases, but yeah. almost everybody that is willing to throw money at, um, online things has PayPal. Has so um, I would say ins ensure that PayPal is an option. But other than that, love it, honey, done, Eva. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's everything. Well, thank you. We appreciate that. Um, I know I don't really work closely with the causes, but I think it is based on a cause if they have PayPal or not. I think they have to have one as a company. I yeah. I could be wrong, but mm -hmm. they could like perhaps encourage them to go make a corporate yeah. Uh, yeah. PayPal account. So that way it mm -hmm. solves one of the issues. Cause if it might encourage more donations, it would be in their best, best exactly to do that. <laughs> so um, I will say this cause mid boss has our own corporate mid PayPal account. PayPal is a little difficult sometimes to maintain every year. They 
try to shut down our account for like no reason and make us resubmit <laughs> new corporate documents to prove that we are still mm -hmm. the same company we were last oh, year. Oh, <laughs> wow. But this is like, <laughs> I've gotten used to like, okay, here it is, just send it off. And then two weeks later, they reactivate it. So sometimes it's difficult with PayPal, but that's not our fault. Mm -hmm. And we do try yeah. to stay on top of it. But mm -hmm. I think that's just like the company has to have one so they can receive the payments. But, mm -hmm. um, but Tiltify, once, as long as they do, then it's super easy to, you know, to donate directly. So it's nice. But I think that's why, because I think some of the international charities that I've looked into, mm -hmm. they will accept, you know, like Amazon payment, um, credit cards, but sometimes not this or not that. It, I think it depends on what they accept or have a sure. account with. But um, that's just my little opposite side of the table information. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely going to take the feedback regardless. So thank you so much, dear, for that. <laughs> dear said, I, it's perfect, though. We love it here. Thank I you. I don't know what else to suggest. Like, That's honestly, good. I expect anything. Yeah. And the way that it is pretty user friendly. <laughs> like if there was a problem somewhere, I'd be like, OK, honey, that's a problem. But it works just, <laughs> just as I need it to work. It's just every once in a while, there will be a charity where you have to use a credit card. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. It turns mm -hmm. young people away from being it does. able to support. I agree. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, dear. And Les, did you have anything Pleasure. to touch with that? Um, no, I haven't really <laughs> run into any issues whenever I have used Tiltify. Um, when I started streaming, like it was the first time that I had ever used something like that as yeah. far as um, fundraising. And so ever since I've you know, use Tiltify. It has been easy to get an overlay, to get the alert, and mm -hmm. it's uh, totally customizable. And um, yeah, I don't, I, I haven't had any issues so far. Good. That's what I like to hear. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you, everyone, for your feedback on that. So I definitely wanted to dive into. How would you tell allies to support the LGBTQIA plus community and how can they uplift you on your content? And we can start with Les. Oh, um, how allies can help. You know, there's many different routes. There's monetary mm -hmm. um, supporting, you know, anything, any causes that I might be raising for um, any things that you know, I might need or things that come up that I might need that I uh, have on my channel um, or just in general. Like if you like what I'm doing, like you can tip me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there's also the route of actually listening to people in those communities when it comes to certain issues, um, especially when it comes to trans issues, listening to trans people and what they have to say and not try to interject or talk over them or try to make it about themselves. Or sometimes I've seen um, some allies, they try to make it about themselves or try to do things in a way that it would make them look better um, and that's, that's totally like not, not good in any way. And so, um, just listening to people in the community. Um, yeah. That's good. Perfect. Thank you so much for that. And we'll throw that same question to you, dear. Um, I think that those are all fantastic points. I mean, don't be performative with your activism and your allyship. Like, don't do it for the attention or the clout. Don't make it about yourself, especially if it's in a charity aspect. Like, feature people that the issue actually affects and don't just use it as a way to prop yourself up for whatever gain you're getting. Like I said, clout, attention, monetary, whatever it is, be genuine with your allyship. And if you... Um, if you've received that feedback from the people that the issue that you are raising awareness for, um, if you receive that feedback from the people that it actually affects, um, 
then maybe take a step back and evaluate um, your approach so that it cannot reappropriate that issue for your own gain. Like, like reevaluate and restructure it so that you can be a kind, courteous, but also effective ally. Because I see those things happening. Um, and in all different kinds of issues, I try to amplify issues that I'm not affected by because I don't want to make it about me. Because drag is exaggerated, drag is loud. If I was to be like, you know, here's X issue that I have nothing to do with, it will probably look like I'm trying to prop myself up from it. So it's something that you should just teach yourself to um, look for. And if you are being genuine, I mean, you can't make everybody happy, but <laughs> at least listen to the people that it might be hurting right. at the end of the day. Um, Perfect. And yeah, just um, amplify, um, interject with your peers that are outside of the issues if you feel that it hurts that group of people. Correct your friends. Um, it's as easy yes. as correcting pronouns or saying, don't joke about that, or yeah. um, that is harmful or hurtful, and it can be in whatever way is your own that can get through to that person. If you care about them, if they care about you, then you should be able to have that conversation with them. But um, surrounding yourself with people that believe in the uh, issue at hand, and if they don't, trying to educate. Because I think that allies are really important because you're then in situations where it's completely removed from that group of people, but you can actually assist in the cause by bringing it up or educating. Because wow. all the time, all the time I'm in, I go to gay clubs, I'm on gay Twitter, I see people in the queer community saying, women shouldn't be at the, at the gay club. Why are they there? And it's like, there are gender non-conforming people. There's lesbians. There's the straight there's queer friends. women. Yeah, exactly. It's like any like you can't <laughs> assume what someone is, and what if they're the correct. A, 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 what if they're a part of the community, or what if they are the biggest ally ever, and you're just completely removing all context of that person in that situation and the power that they have outside of that situation too. So I think it's important to understand where people are coming from and understand someone's allyship and give people the benefit of the doubt and try to help the causes that are important to you. And yeah, hopefully, yeah. hopefully there's some sense in there. Oh no, oh, that yeah. was great. <laughs> that was powerful. I think, I think that that brings also <laughs> bigger issues when people are doing those kind of things, especially towards queer women. Uh, and non-binary um, individuals. Absolutely. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Th both statements were powerful. Oh my gosh, the power I, with your words. I love if it. I had written down, if I had written it down, it would have been much more concise. Oh, you're <laughs> fine. No, it made all the sense. <laughs> okay. Yes. Yes. And I'm sure everyone here in chat they absorbed all of that information and are going to take it with them. Okay. So thank you for educating everyone. And Kay, did you want to touch on that a little bit? I don't know if I have anything else to add. I, I was gonna, <laughs> I was just thinking of like the points that I would say, but you all checked them off for me. Like mainly just like gently correct people, educate them or point them to education. Cause sometimes it's exhausting for us to have to educate everybody and why should we have to, but you can point them to resources maybe, or at least, suggest that they go like read up on it because everybody has access to google um you know the way that i like to operate because even though i'm a queer person uh i recognize that i'm a cis white queer person so i have you know like some of those you know privileges and so whenever it comes to supporting more than just queer causes i like to just gently use you know like retweet share like correct people whenever i hear shenanigans that are happening you know because I can be an ally for those things as well. It's basically everything that Dear and Liz said, but recognizing who you are, and then I like to push every like push people out front in front of the camera and let them like shine, and then behind the scenes I can like help and support, and that's kind of what I do with Season of Pride, but <clears throat> that's also how I operate on a daily, you know, daily basis for everything. So. <clears throat> 
perfect. Thank you all of you I for will, touching on that. Oh, go ahead, I honey. I will say one more thing. With, yeah. Because uh, Kate mentioned education. I will say with education, yes, Google is free. But I always say this. I always say this when it comes to uh, some of my other siblings, when other people are trying to get education from them. If someone is asking for that labor, they need to pay for that labor <laughs> and that education that you are spending your time, your effort into giving to someone else. Absolutely. I, I mean, ed <laughs> education is time and effort. And we, as marginalized people, whatever whatever the marginalization is, um, we sort of need the freedom to exist and not have to educate every single day, every yes. single moment of yes. the day. So it's up to you if you educate or not. But if you're an ally, you should do it for free. Yes. yes. <laughs> Woo! You heard it here, folks. You heard it right here, directly from these amazing people, okay? Take it with you, okay? And I know we're getting close up on time, but we do have a few questions in chat. All right. So, op <coughs> Oppa, Opa, Oppa Milk. I love that Oppa name. Milk. Oppa. Oppa Milk. Oppa Milk. Okay, that's so cute. <laughs> with public places opening up, is there a chance of bringing Tiltify fundraising into other venues? Ooh. Ooh. That's an interesting one. Ooh. Like does, does Tiltify do anything outside of digital? Not yet. <gasps> Ooh. That's, that's all I got to say. Wow. Well, <laughs> of course, we are working on things. I will okay. say that. Love okay that. um because you know that's our description we're online fundraising platform but of course mm -hmm. we want to we want to be more than that because we have the tools to be more than that and support because you know listen there's so many people that fundraise thousands hundreds of dollars without streaming or making a piece of content just saying See? um they just use our platform you know they'll just you know just by word of mouth hey i'm fundraising for trans lifeline here's a link Boom. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, we've had people that <laughs> sold salsa for St. Jude, you know, um, Mob Lord. Mm -hmm. He, um, everyone that donated towards their campaign, he sent them salsa. So, you know, wow. there's there's so really many, fun. yeah, so many things <laughs> we have so seen cool. on our platform that are going to influence that for sure. So I will say that. <laughs> mm -hmm. So that was a good question. Thank you. And we have our next one. What are some good methods of amplifying or improving, incentivizing my Tiltify streams? I often don't reach my donation goals and would love to see that bar fill up. Do we have anyone that wanted to answer that for the lovely Chalora? So, Chalora. I love Chalora. Chalora. Okay, it is Chalora. Chalora. Love it. We love Chalora. <laughs> yes. um, so, I am super grateful for my platform that I've cultivated over the past five years. Mm -hmm. And so, I have found that doing incentive goals aren't always that lucrative to the charity. And sometimes it can put me in a precarious position of like, do I put myself in discomfort for charity? And I have mm -hmm. found that like testing it both ways, I usually end up with around the same amount. Um, so I would, if you like to be a meme lord, you can do the bean boozle thing. You can do like, you put the controller down for every so-and-so. Um, you, if, if you, if somebody donates a, a substantial amount, you turn the stream off or you turn a light off or you turn off the camera, whatever. A lot of people do like the um, embarrassing or challenging or mm -hmm. um, meme kind of things. But a lot of the time I myself don't have any incentives and I still, I might not always reach the goal, but I'll still get a good amount for charity. So I think it's just, um, all I want to say is there's benefits to doing incentives and sometimes there's benefits to not doing incentives. But um, ones that I have loved is during Halloween a few years ago for um, Scarathon, I um, I appeared just like this pretty pretty beauty face. And then um, for every in, for every um, donation of twenty dollars or more, I added to my face and then I became a witch. Like I did like wrinkle Ooh. lines, I did warts, and then I 
like put on a witch hat and I put, I changed my wig and I put on like these, um, like these gross finger things. Like it was just a lot of fun. So you can be really creative with it so that it's like brand new. Ooh, I love all of those dear. Thank you. Did we have yeah. anyone else that want to touch base on that? If not, that's totally fine. I was going to say, I've seen, Annette, Les, did you have something? Oh, I can go last if you had anything. Um, no, I think Deer kind of covered some of the things that I was going to say. Um, <clears throat> like, it really just depends on your community. Like, if they know that you don't like scary games, then, you know, that could be an incentive or um, even playing, like, a game that you wouldn't usually play just so that, you know, your community can have fun. Um, mm -hmm. Just watching you play it, um, those could be some things. Um, maybe like additional like giveaway kind of things. I don't know. Yeah, kind of those things. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, I was going to say, my answer is since I don't stream, but I watch a lot of streams, obviously. Uh, I've been trying this year in particular to see if there's any patterns. I think Les is right. It really depends on your individual audience and community, like what they tend to go for. Mm -hmm. Also, there are only so many bean boozles, <laughs> bean boozle beans that someone can possibly eat before they get like just ill, you know. Because mm -hmm. um, I learned that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I've seen some people not this year, but previous years where they just like ate so much sugar and junk that they were just like yeah. not feeling great later, and they raised a lot of money, but. Mm -hmm. at what cost i think it really depends i think creativity helps come in i think also one of the subtle things that's not exactly an incentive but some streamers are pretty good about remembering like every five or ten minutes verbalize like hey i remember i'm doing this for charity point to your little you know your tiltify bar and say like you know every little if you have any you know if you have a little money we'd appreciate it but you know it's totally cool if not but just verbalizing that like every probably 10 minutes or so some streamers i've seen get so into the game that they're playing that they forget to talk about yeah. the, the mm. point that they're streaming yeah. for like an hour and a half and then they finally redo and they usually raise some money but i think just like verbalizing that because you can have your chat bot, action like, exactly you know and like you can have your chat bot post a link every 15 minutes or whatever and that does mm. some good but i think verbalizing it mm. mentioning it Mm -hmm. um like even if you have to set a quiet timer off screen just so you remember like hey pause the game let's talk about this for 30 seconds and then mm -hmm. get back to it i think that cadence because streamers come into your audience and leave all the time and you may not know like how many stay with you for a duration so just stopping and reminding them say hey check out this link if you can help great if not please stay for the show and enjoy it but i think that is one thing that i've seen that is a successful tactic that doesn't cost anything it's not an incentive that you have to think about and plan for mm -hmm. but it does seem to have a like it does seem to be a variable that i've seen um that helps people succeed to hit the goals that they want so to laura uh i think you're pretty good about it from what i remember to laura but um that do i would tell all streamers like if you're doing a charity stream every 10 minutes make a little call out to it um mm -hmm. and i i would bet that that would increase their their fundraising yeah. yeah. And I'm just going to touch a little bit on it. Um, really, I've seen the most success from my personal fundraisers by sitting there and just chatting and just talking about the cause, getting deep into discussion with my community about where the funds go and how we can bring awareness and simply just, you know, connecting your community to that cause so they know how they can uplift um, regardless of donations. I really think stressing dollar donations as well is super important. I literally say that every five minutes. Hey, if you have a dollar you want to donate, donate a dollar because every dollar makes a difference. And every dollar, it's it gets into a big old pool. If I always say this. I'm like, there's 120 people here in a stream. If you all donate $1, that's $120. So don't yeah. think that your dollar isn't impactful because it is um and you know if they don't have a dollar because if they don't that's fine they can retweet your stream they can you know retweet mm -hmm. and bring awareness right. to that cause and i know i know we're talking about you know 
reaching donation goals and such. But really stress that within your community, you know, build that cadence and you'll see more success throughout your charity streams because just having that connection with your community is going to be so worth it. You know, I just want to stress that because that's what I'm all about. (laughs) And I've definitely. Oh, sorry. I I also want to add that, um, of course, it's fantastic reaching uh, donation goals. Like if you have a big goal and you want to reach that and you reach it, like, of course, that's amazing. And the community celebrates it. But even if you don't reach the goal, if you donated $10 as a community, if you donated $30, if you donated a couple hundred, a couple thousand, however much it is, even if it's not it's, it's your- still something. It's, yep. it's still something. It's still an amount of money that that charity didn't have before. Yesterday. And yep. that helps. Mm-hmm. It I was really just going to say that. Yep. They didn't Even have it yesterday. The goal, yep. It's still important and it's still fantastic work. So you should be proud even if it's not the goal. Yeah. I was just going to stress say, that. <laughs> I was going to say the season of pride, like one of the things that we don't do is we don't gate like who can participate based on, you know, have they done this before or do they have a big audience? Do they, are they a partner yeah. or not mm-hmm. or affiliate or not? Like, um, the only question that we have that we make them agree to is like, do they identify as part of the queer community? Yes or no. Um, and do they stream on a semi-regular basis? I want to make sure that they can show up and do it. Um, mm-hmm. But like we have a wide range of streamers in terms of like audiences with t- tens of thousands of followers yeah. and like hundreds of, some of them have thousands of regular people that show up every day to view. And some of them as small as like, you know, maybe a couple hundred followers with like maybe an yeah. average viewership of like five. Every bit helps. Yeah. And it really does. Um, and collectively, I can say right here and now, as of right now, I'm looking at my Tiltify dashboard, we have raised $22,969.70. We are like $30 and Right? We are like $30 and change away from 23000 which is going to break last year's goal literally by the end of today. So, wow. That's so great. That is Hold amazing. On. That's so great. Let's right? post the link. Hold on. Posting the link. Check out Season of Pride right there. Okay. Woo! Do the things. Mm-hmm. That's exciting. <laughs> Yeah, oh my I mean, gosh. If I was to go look down at the individual breakdowns of donations and mm-hmm. the individual, you know, streamer campaigns, like it's all over the place. Um, but all of it together is what helps us do a massive amount of good. And like the data mm-hmm. shows that it's, it's very, it's very heartwarming. And um, we're just kicking so much butt. Can I just say that? <laughs> it's yeah. Incredible. I'm yeah. proud of us doing this prideful event pride perfect and i just i just want to thank all of you for watching this stream today it was thank you so much seriously i love my job and i'm so happy i get to highlight these amazing creators and brands and companies so thank you so much and again we do have the control plus extension on our stream make sure you are following their twitch channels but we're going to do some outros here since we are all done with our chat so Cade, let's get an outro from you and if you want to share mid boss socials or your own personal socials you can um again my name is Cade peterson i run a little queer game studio called mid boss um and every year we do several things to lift up other game studios uh, content creators and charities so check us out at midboss.com or you can check out our this monthly event that we the third annual season of pride at seasonofpride.tv. Um, we have events and streamers happening 15 hours a day every day in the month of July. So tune in. Um, and if you want to donate to a good cause, please do. Um, and otherwise, stay tuned for our new game, Read Only, uh, Read Only Memories Neurodiver. It, there is a demo available on both Steam and the Epic Game Store. And our new comic book comes out September 7th called Read Only Memories. <laughs> a lot of Read Only Memories. But, yep, that's pretty much it. Thank Perfect. You. Thank you, Cade. And we'll do Deer next. My name is Deer. Let's play what you fear. I like to play scary games. And um, you can find me serving you drag excellence five days a week on my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash deer. And you can also find me on my own channel on July 30th 
during the season of Pride playing Dominique Pamplemousse 2. Yay! At 9 yeah. p.m. Pacific, yes. 9 p.m. Pacific, <laughs> perfect. Noted on my calendar. Thank you, dear. And thank Les! You. Thank you for having me. Yeah. No, thank you for being here. Um, yeah, so my name is Lesbiana, non-binary, a drag king here on, uh, on Twitch. Um, you can find me at Lesbiana. Um, I have all social media, Twitter, um, if you'd like to see my other looks. Um, I do have Instagram by the same name all around. Um, yeah, my schedule is not solidified as much. Um, but um, you can always follow my socials to see when I go live or when I'm about to go live. Um, I usually try to give a little leeway before I actually go live. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you so much to all thank of you, you again. Seriously, thank you, thank you, thank you. And everyone in chat, again, make sure you are following these creators and uplifting them. And keep up with Mid Boss and all the new games they have, which is super exciting. We are going to go raid the next streamer. That season of boss or season of boss. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> that, <laughs> that season of pride is doing. We have Minty. M yeah, menin, nice. menin. I think it's minty menin. I think I'm saying that correct. It's like the minin, it's like the minin or min minin from like Pokemon. Oh, like perfect. Minin. Okay, yeah. got minin. it. So sorry if I butchered that. If you watch this later, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we we're just gonna do a little tiltify raid. I put a raid message in there, and we're gonna Let's go. Let's get into it. We're gonna send the yes. love over. Uplift queer creators. Let's go. Thank you so much, everyone, and have a beautiful rest of your day. Bye. Bye-bye.